Good morning. Uh, I'd just like to start off with a, um, a little bit about Acacia. It's a unit at Cumberland Hospital. It's a 20 bed long stay secure rehabilitation ward. Its clients are considered at risk or self of, uh, of self or others. And their major diagnosis or treatment uh, is of treatment resistant schizophrenia. The mission statement, uh, the, the aim of the Essentials to Care project in the mission statement was to provide a safe and comfortable space which stimulates the senses, creating a calm, tranquil and relaxing experience that has beneficial effects on individuals' mental health, well-being, and their recovery. In a mental health setting, there is always the potential for aggression, agitated behaviour that requires PRN medication, seclusion and assault and injury. And these aren't uncommon in mental health facilities. The extent of the problem in Acacia was became about by consumers, healthcare professionals and carers expressing their concerns regarding the increased incidence of aggression, consumers being victims of aggressive outbursts and other consumers, staff injury related to aggressive incidents, use of seclusion room, rates of absence without leave by consumers, staff sick leave, PRN administration. Uh, some of this information was collected through staff and patient satisfaction surveys and, and meetings. So as Kevin said, these things are not uncommon in a mental health facility, but it becomes a problem when staff and consumers, family members start complaining about it. What are you doing about this? So what we had to do was to review our processes. What was it that's causing all this? And in these things, everyone was affected, consumers, staff and family members. So what we did, we created a consultation team that considered, consisted of all of us, the staff, the consumers and their representatives, the families, to identify what was the problem and what could be done about it. So the team consisted of everyone within our unit, our 21 nursing staff, our medical staff, which is our registrar, CMO and our psychiatrist, Allied Health, everyone that was part of us or anyone that worked within our facility, the hospital that we could access, social workers, OTs, diversional therapists, even our dietitian we consulted to find out how can, what is it that's happening within our unit. All the Allied Health staff were consulted. We consulted our cleaners, our patient service assistants, as well as the consumer network. To represent the consumers and their families, we consulted our family support worker and whoever family members and carers that we could have involved in our program. And every consumer within our unit was consulted to find out what is it that's not happening, what is it that's going wrong, and why is the unit so unsafe at the moment. To find out what was causing agitation, aggression, why was PRN rising, and why were we using seclusion? Where prior to four years, we didn't even have a seclusion room in our unit. So through the consultation team, we identified that because of the increased noise in our facility, the lack of space, the overcrowding in our unit, at one time we may have up to 24 patients in our facility, which is only made for 20 clients. The intrusive and disruptive behavior because of their illness or frustration with the circumstances they're in. Aggression was the result of hostility, limited space, and the lack of personal space and their elevated mood because of their illness, or again, the frustrations that they were in, which all led to often PRN use, that was to minimize aggression, promote safety, and try and alleviate consumers' distress. However, we, didn't, we weren't able to give PRN to the staff. <laughs> Seclusion, in severe cases, was used to again promote safety of staff and consumers, family members, and provide some time out for highly distressed consumers. So once we realise that we really need to do something, what is it that we need? And again, we all got together to brainstorm to find out what possible solution is required. We needed something that was low stimulus, something that was calm, safe and comfortable, something that promoted personal space, a space within the limited space that we have where consumers could go out or find some time for themselves something that was calm and relaxed, which promoted personal space as well as something that was therapeutic and pleasant. Something that would hopefully reduce aggression and agitation. Something that could be bright and colorful, 
as a form of distraction or something that would take them away, away from the sterile, dull hospital walls. Again, something that's natural and enjoyable and pleasant, which all pointed towards one thing, possibly the need for a sensory garden. Once we need, realize that we need something like a sensory garden with the limited space that we have, where are we going to create it? We can't grow outwards, we can't go upwards. What is it that we have? So we looked at the most suitable space within our unit and identified a courtyard that was the least used. Again, due to risks of aggression, there was a fence that had access to people passing illicit substances, risky knives, syringes, things that would, again, promote risks by using that courtyard. Therefore, lack of supervision within that facility, therefore we decided the unit, that's the reasons why this area was the least used within our unit. But this is what we had. So again, we now have an area that we could use that would promote safety, promote some personal space. But how are we going to convert this? So we again brainstormed within our consultation team, which compromised of everyone possible. People sort of getting frustrated by us too. We needed money. Money, where is this money coming from? How are we going to convert this area? We asked for donations. The team came up with the idea of raffle tickets. Christmas was coming up, so we did a Christmas hamper. Easter, we still didn't have enough, so we went to a Mother's Day hamper as well. <laughs> we asked garden centres, people around, staff, family members, who could possibly donate. And then the whole team, staff, consumers and their relatives became volunteers in our project. Now we've got the funds, we know what we want, how are we going to implement it? So we needed something that was going to work, not just to resolve the problems that we have, but that something that can be sustained. So again, we got around the table to identify what is it that we need to do to create the best garden within the service that we have. We have a client in our facility with an artist background, and he volunteered his services to do some sketching for us. He's going to sketch, but what are we sketching? So we decided to take the whole board to a number of sensory gardens around the area to look at what's working for them and what's not working for them. Did a bit of research to type of equipment that would be needed. And then again, what comes next? Risk assessments. With risk assessments, we identified what is it that's safe to plant, when to plant it, when to harvest it, and all the things in maintaining the garden would be necessary. We will have a garden, we've got plants now, donations, but what is it that we can use to enhance the garden, the ornaments, the extras that we need? And in this process, we also identified possibly the need of some pet therapy and animals within our facility. And this is what we've created. Quite different to what the previous slides showed. We have a water feature within the service. A lot of space now for the consumers to get some time out for themselves. Not from the sitar, but from the distress that's going on with the illness. We have a number of garden ornaments within the garden. Wall garden, different cultures, different countries were consulted. Lots of color. Lots of senses, smell. We also have a fish pond in the background. Yeah. Um, other outcomes for the garden that we had all of the consumers in the ward participated in it. They all helped dig up the garden, plant, and do all the other you know, water, everything that was needed. They were all involved in. The handcrafted ornaments also came from the hospital. They were done by the VTU unit, and um, they did quite a few, which were 
looked quite good. You saw the ostrich before, there's a tiger, a whole heap of them. We also looked at the five senses when we were doing the garden. So we put in wind chimes, the water fountain for the relaxation. We've got, bird, we've got budgies in there now. They're quite noisy in the morning. Um, we also had different flowers with different scents. We put in herbs, you know, for the different textures, different tastes, and that was all incorporated into the garden. Uh, we also brought in the pets. <laughs> we've got eight budgies there in a cage, which, uh, uh, and, and a rabbit. We've got a rabbit as well. The rabbit also brought into the, um, the, the expression of emotions for the patients where they become quite affectionate with the rabbits. They're all rostered on to look after the rabbit. You know, they clean the cage, they feed it, and uh, it, it goes quite well. They're allowed to pat it, pick it up, and um, look after it. So instead of aggression, being violent and aggressive, you know, they're showing affection, feelings and emotions that they had but weren't able to express. This is a data comparison of before first six months and after the last six months. As you can see, our aggression, aggressive acts were approaching 70. That's the first six months prior to the garden being implemented. Staff injuries were high. Patients becoming victims of aggression were very high. There was use of seclusion room. Patients were running away from us, and we wonder why. <laughs> and there was also use of restraints. In the first six months of implementation, things improved remarkably and that's represented by the blue lines. And the last six months, which the data was from July 2013 to July, December 2013, the progress has continued. Our aggressive acts have improved. Patient staff injuries have remarkably improved. Patient becoming victims of aggression. Again, very, very little now. That's less than five within six months. Patients are no longer running away, and therefore we're not restraining people. Yeah, the ongoing use and maintenance of the garden. We have the gardening group, which looks after the garden, fertilisers, waters, weeds. We also have, have a relaxation group and a mindfulness group. This is run in conjunction with the psychologist. Uh, we've, there's selected patients that go and do that, and it's nice and relaxing and peaceful in the garden. It's just a good place to do it instead of a, just a, a room with four square walls. Uh, we've got the pet therapy, which we mentioned earlier. We've also got a women's health over coffee group where we bring out the linen tablecloth and all the china and, and the um, female patients in the, in the ward all gather around and talk about whatever's happening on, with them during the, the day. Um, we've also got uh, extra space, the additional benefits. We've got the extra space. We've now got a secure fence. So that it means that the patients can go out there without supervision from the staff and, and that gives them a break from us. Um, there's also areas for families to visit. We've had really good feedback from the families. There's now a place that they can go and sit comfortably with their, their relatives and that, and without interference from anybody else. Um, there's ownership of the garden by consumers, carers and treating team, and it's also lifted the ward morale and the patients and staff are proud to show off the garden. The garden falls within the domains of essentials of care. I guess it demonstrates a culture focused on care learning and development. Carers were, and consumers and relatives were empowered through collaboration in identifying the problem and finding solutions for the problem. The garden also is linked within the National Standards for Mental Health Services, where consumers and carers are involved in the planning, implementation, and again, evaluation. Mental health service works within the defined community in prevention, early detection, and health promotion. And our main aim and achievement is prevented it's promoted safety and prevented risks. Okay, what's next? Well, we're continuing the essentials of care on the sensory garden. We'll be changing it as you know, different seasons, different plants. We also plan to start a vegetable garden as Acacia's backyard. That has already commenced. It's in its early stages and they're preparing to plant the vegetables. Thank you. Thank you.